Hey guys, today I'm taking you to the gym. I'm on King Street West heading to Cardio Goes King West Club where I'm going to show you six essential lifts for your inline skating. How to meet your inline skating potential and how to stay at that potential for a very long time. Okay, here we are at the Mighty Go. Inline skating's elements of balance, agility, speed, and power make it superior to all other forms of conditioning activities. It's true. But sometimes too much of a good thing can impact you negatively. If you are not training away from skating, you will be a lesser skater with a shortened skating life. Here we see the muscles involved in inline skating. The lower body and core is lit up, but the upper body, though actively involved, does not get nearly as much work. When one muscle group is developed and its opposing muscle group is not, posture, connective tissues, nerves, speed, and power can all be degraded. The squat is an obvious one. Inline skating relies heavily on the quads and glutes for strides, jumps, and landings. Gaining power beyond what skating alone gives you will enable you to break height, jump barriers, make bigger drops, and improve speed radically. For our sport, squat to where your glutes are just below your kneecap, or patella. Keep your lower back concave and chest up throughout. Don't let your chin get ahead of your knees. The negative or the way down should be controlled, and the positive needs to be explosive. Generally, two seconds down, one second up is about right. The deadlift is the most important one on this list because skating overdevelops the quads and glutes, leaving the power ratio between quads and hams lopsided. This power disparity will lead to a forward tilt of the pelvis and quite likely nervous and inflammatory issues in the lower back and hips. So it's the same rule here, chest up, butt out. It should be a very sassy pose. Get the hips forward at the top to completely offload the back. Remember to inhale on the negative and start to breathe out partway into the positive, ending with completion. The one-legged dead is tough, but superior for sport application with regards to balance and power transfer. Add this once you've nailed the two-legged dead. One-arm snatch. This explosive move is a turbo boost for the jumping pattern and feels like a less impactful version of the big landing. It's the most whole body move in this video. Though some consider this a shoulder exercise, much of the drive comes from the lower body. To me, this is a jump. Your traps should help start the move and your shoulders will finish and stabilize, but this is a very leggy move. Again, you are keeping your chest up on this and lower back concave. Don't hit your nose, but do let the dumbbell pass close to you, not way out in front on the way down. The dumbbell or bench press will give you the strong roll cage you need for when you fall. I have actually face planted into the exact position of the bench press many times. If I didn't bench, I simply wouldn't have my own teeth. And I probably wouldn't skate anymore. It's also a muscle group that remains completely unchallenged by inline skating. So you have to hit it if you want to be symmetrical aesthetically pleasing. While I do arch my back when benching, I don't allow my glutes to leave the bench. I consider a butt lift rep as a not a rep. Tap down lightly on the lower outer pecs and reverse with speed. Keep your feet planted. Moving your feet will give you an unstable base and mess with your power and joints. Flat bench is cool, but incline helps avoid overdevelopment of the lower outer pec, which can lead to a rather Tubular look. I will lift my butt on the initial rep of a heavy set just to get myself into position. Not a rep. Standing row is the ultimate back blaster. This exercise offers great range of motion for the back and also engages the core, hips, and lower leg stabilizers. Enjoy reaching but don't twist the torso. Keep the torso upright 
with no forward or backward sway. Your leg should be bent and opposite of your hand position. Your front foot turned slightly inwards to enhance balance. Don't max out on this one. It's complex. Enjoy it. Ball crunch. Crunching to the top, throwing the ball and catching the ball at the top of a crunch will give you three different abdominal contractions and will hit you from various angles. This is perfect perturbation and absorption training for our sport. Start with a basketball and play this like a game. Get your shoulder blades off the ground at the top, lower your head to the mat at the bottom. Do not start going down to the mat until you've caught the ball and owned the ball. Moving to the sides is the full version. Try to match the wide, narrow, and high attempts equally per side. Oh yes, and do this one far away from others for obvious reasons. Sorry I broke your nose, ma'am. Here's the set and rep structure. Do the first three on the left and then the three on the right. When it's around six to eight reps, you're putting out almost maximum effort. Nine to 12 reps should be difficult. And 13 to 16 reps should leave you with a burn, but you should have plenty in the tank. I would suggest a more varied program once these are mastered, but these are what you must do now if you're not lifting. Get to it. <laughs>